episode of Primsis Cinema is sponsored by Keeps. Did you know that over two thirds of men will experience some sort of hair loss by the time they're 35? Oh. Keeps is a subscription service that helps you prevent hair loss so you can keep all that amazing hair you got. Don't wait too long. Don't be a bald head scallywag. Don't, ain't got no hair in the bag. All Keeps treatment plans are doctor recommended and delivered straight to your door for way less than you would pay at a regular pharmacy. Honestly, I've been looking a little shaky myself. That's the best time to do something about it, right when you notice the shakiness. I've been subscribed for a while now. It definitely makes a huge difference for me personally. I noticed results pretty quickly. They got a whole network of medical experts to support you and answer all your questions along the way. They'll help you pick the exact right products that you need for your head specifically. If your hairline is creeping back, bro, don't wait too long. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, head over to keeps.com slash cinema or just click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash cinema. Thank you, Keeps, for sponsoring the video. Let's get into the video. It starts off with Mega Man in the crib, selling weed to all his different customers. <laughs> Just call this nigga Mega Man? What the fuck? Oh, hell no. It starts off with Method Man in the crib selling weed. He got a bunch of wacky, hilarious customers coming over all the time. Like, Jamaican person? He's super Jamaican. It's funny. He Jamaican. My bumble cloud Johnson no working, see? Then you got a random crackhead dude. He's addicted to drugs real bad. It was really funny. You got anything for him? One of Mega Man's homeboys shows up now, dressed like goddamn Lakeith Stanfield. His name is Ivory. He says he has a date with some girl he met off chickenheads.com and he needs something to smoke on tonight. All she cares about is Kevin Costner movies. Dances with wolves. Feel the dreams. That's a corny motherfucker. Oh, Will! Dog, you shouldn't have. I didn't out of here with that shit. Come on, man, let me just grab a titty. I don't know. She wouldn't even know it was me. What the hell with that? Oh, that's sexual assault, my nigga. Are you joking or whatever? That's hella not cool, though. You probably would've did that shit, too. Either way, you just hovering over her like this is kind of bad. Wake her up and politely ask for some titty. That's how we do shit now. Weapon, 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 weapon. Let the man shows Ivory all the different weed strains he's growing. He's really good at growing weed, and he always wanted to have his own lab someday. Ivory says he should go to school or something for weed, college, I don't know. Method Man says nah, he don't want to do that. Then he looks directly into the camera at one point. Damn, this is a good ass movie. Whoa! I asked him why I had to cancel my nail appointment and go and pick him up in the precinct last week. What is this that I found in your bedroom? Hello, my, it is a lamp. <laughs> Six years at a two-year community college is not what I had in mind. You're gonna have to take that THC test and get into a four-year college or I'm gonna just cut you off from this family. We cut over to Red Man's life now and he lived with his mom in the hood. He's in the middle of getting a beaten or some shit. It's plastic all over the furniture. This is a sad hood movie now, low-key. Why is his life so whack compared to Method Man's? Like, this nigga got random holes in the bed. He got a closet full of weed. Random stereotypes showing up at his door, saying funny things. Meanwhile, this nigga Red Man is getting beat for owning a bomb. Stop, oh mama. Wash your nasty ass. Mega Man and Red Man both getting ready for their college entry test in a few months. They call it the THC test, the testing for a higher curriculum. It's kind of funny. It's like a fake SATs or whatever. These old ass niggas, bro. How old are they supposed to be? They taking the damn SATs? Both these niggas are like 30 years old at this point. They way older than everybody here. Nobody even acknowledges these them. old ass niggas. But it's never too late though or something, right? Go to college. I don't know. Go to college. What do you want from me? You man. Brother just got extensions put in today. They tight, huh? Where? Between your eyes? I'm in the field of dreams and dances with wolves. Nickel, you are a wolf. Mm. You be a goddess. I'm taking you off my buddy this bitch. Mm. Ivory's date goes bad, of course. They put another funny, silly wig on him. He says he got extensions or something for the date. That's pretty funny too. Probably just cause I'm high. I mean, this movie does have his moments. None of this shit would be funny though if I wasn't high. They was just doing anything, bro. They didn't even care. It was like, hey dog, put some funny wigs on this dude. Now give him a glue in my eyebrows on him. 
dollar dollar bill y'all like it's complete nonsense it's a stoner movie so you gotta expect that they all like this a little bit a bunch of hit or miss gags hijinks all that this one's got a lot of misses though i can't lie it's got quite a few hits too though like tracy morgan showing up randomly in all the tv shows that's the best shit i ever seen that should be a thing what you mean if you build it they're gonna come who are these people that are gonna come to a fucking cornfield the only way i'm coming is if you got some females and some chronic and then we all gonna be coming yeah you must have heard that Ivory's really funny wig catches on fire. Then he falls out the window and dies. That's very sad. Rest in peace, Ivory. Really miss my nigga. He gets cremated and Mega Man ends up putting his ashes in some weed that he was growing. That's gross. That's insane, bro. Who would do some shit like that? That's some white people shit. But it's later now and it's time for the big test. Mega Man brings some ivory weed with him for good luck. Red Man brings some little bit of ass dirt pack. Oh, hell no. This shit hella brown. What is this? And they do a fart joke here, by the way. Just thought I would throw that in there. It's not funny. No cigar? No! Got blunt? Got weed? Red Man don't got no weed, and Method Man don't got no swishers or whatever. So they team up and smoke together, and they best friends now. They like a Cheech and Chong now. They both Cheeches and Chongs or something. These niggas definitely do have good chemistry. I can see why this movie was made. They like a fake Wayans Brothers almost. They just like Sean and Marlon Wayans Brothers. It works. It's a good dynamic. Fake Wayans Brothers. They in the car smoking on that ivory pack together. Bro, that shit is so gross, man. I mean, it's cool for you to do that yourself. He don't know your fucking homeboy. He didn't agree to smoke your homeboy's remains. What the fuck? You should have at least told this nigga there was crushed up homeboy in the weed. He didn't agree to that. <laughs> This is the shit. That shit is called the ivory. It's the shit. Bro. That's the ivory. What's up, dog? I've, oh, shit. You got to me. Yo, yo, Frank. Yeah, this is what happens when you smoke your boy. Holy shit. But you got to understand that people can only see me when they smoke me. I got all the answers. I can consult with you. Every college in the country will be knocking at your door. Ivory comes back as a ghost, and he says he can help these niggas cheat on all the tests. He a good homeboy. He their ghost homeboy for the rest of the movie now. I guess this nigga don't want to see his family or nothing though. I mean, damn, y'all can share some with his family at least so they can say goodbye or something. It's a huge scientific breakthrough low key. They don't even care, bro. Regardless, their plan works. They get good grades on the THC exams and they decide to go to Harvard together. There's a snooty principal character here at Harvard. His name Dean Kane. He the Dean of Harvard. Dean Kane don't want Red Man and Mega Man going to a school because they old as shits and they ghetto or something. I saw those guys' pictures. They look like mugshots. I don't care. I want them. Fred Willard is here and he says that Harvard needs more black people. So Dean Kane don't got no choice. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of other black people you can choose from, right? Ones that didn't cheat on their fucking test, maybe? You definitely don't want these two niggas at your school, bro. I promise you. Pick somebody else. Well, I was right. They are Ben Franklin's. I love Ben Franklin, girl, and I can listen to you talk about his stinking ass all day long. Do anybody know where the financial aid office is? Gee, I don't think I've ever met anyone who actually needed to go there. They go to Harvard and they're meeting all the generic college stoner film characters, like Preppy White Bully, he in the movie, he a Preppy White Bully. Steve Rogers looking ass boy. Smart girl, love interest type girl, she's here too. Also jittery nerd friend and heavy Asian accent friend. Stoner movie, it's a masterpiece. Please help me. These niggas with attitudes. I have welcomed students from all over the world. Excuse me, are we in the right place? Anyone, anyone? Is that what you're saying? So oh, green Jimmy the cricket soup wearing ass motherfucker. Get him! Oh, short colon pack. Watch your toes, watch the coins. <laughs> Isn't that like a hip hop convention that you two should be at or something? Ooh. Jeez, <laughs> this class is fucking boring. I'm out of here. Uh, excuse me. With all due respect, sir, suck my dick. <gasps> oh, I say idiot. An idiot? No, sir. No, sir. What I... did you say? This room is not big enough for this gag to work. 
You can see the dude's mouth is not moving. You're not that far away. You can also clearly see Method Man and Red Man fucking around behind him. Who would fall for that? I feel like I'm watching a goddamn Animaniacs or some shit. It's so wacky. They was really just doing anything. What's up? What's up? What blood, my brothers? <laughs> I designed it myself. I call it Boofoo. Boofoo. Oh, no. <laughs> but if you two are our roommates, who's that? That's I need money. Damn. <laughs> Red Man lets his homeboy come along and crash with them at Harvard. His name is I Need Money. He don't talk at all. He like a silent Bob couch guy. Stoner movie. You gotta have a guy that don't talk for some reason. You also gotta have neurotic snitch antagonist character. He in the movie. He's like the RA and he's super dweeby. He be riding around on his bike trying to get niggas in trouble all the time. It's volunteer officer Picklestein. They have a little montage of Red Man practicing with the crew team now. He joined the crew team earlier because preppy white bully dared him to. He's not very good at it though. He ends up cheating at this race or whatever by catching a taxi. That's an old ass joke, my nigga. This nigga love cheating at stuff, bro. Can you stop cheating at shit for like two seconds? Again, this movie is just all these little gags back to back. A lot of them don't be hitting for me. Some of them are pretty good though. A uh, white African-American history teacher is kind of funny. The concept is funny. This guy ruined it though. He doing too much. You look like Whitey. You look like a couple of goddamn Uncle Toms. That's right. Yeah. Get up and move. You should lynch me. Snitch dude's bike getting fucked up is hilarious. I need money steals the snitch dude's bike and wrecks it for some reason. That's not cool. This nigga don't even go here. How you not get kicked out yet? <laughs> Red Man dreaming about smashing his professor is a good gag too. There's quite a few funny parts in here. Okay, I've been too hard on this movie. Uh, this professor is hella mid by the way. Just throwing that in there. I always thought that. Why do movies always use the same type of white lady? Strong face, skinny white lady. Why was that the standard? So you're playing grabby ass again, huh? Did you wash your ass today? Ah, ah, damn, my, stop, my. These niggas really need to stop smoking this dead body, bro. Look what it's doing to you. It's probably embalming fluid, all kinds of shit in that shit. They all in the dorm watching porno together now. Asian dude is beating his meat in front of everybody. It's hella weird. Is this what college is like, bro? I didn't go to college. Goddamn virgins. What are you doing? You're a great paddle. I don't like a man. What is your ass doing rowing a boat? You're supposed to be in class. Who the hell is that woman in the sky? I guess you might as well come back home and live with me. Oh, hell no! Shit! Did you cuss at me? Roll, motherfucker, roll! Okay, this is one of the funniest parts in the movie to me. I don't know why. Why can't everybody see her? I can't explain why it's so funny to me. I was laughing for like 20 minutes off this bullshit. They're doing more love interest stuff too. They both got love interest for some reason. You definitely didn't need to add either one of these bitches. Why do they need love interest? They about to have a huge Halloween party at Princeton or whatever the fuck school they go to. They want to help their nerd friends get some ass. So they pull up on these prostitutes or sex workers, I meant sex workers. Then they invite the prostitutes to a costume party and it's super lit. Everybody having a good time. Cypress Hill is here. There's a donkey here also. It's pretty These cool. There's also a fancier costume party going on upstairs. Preppy White Bully is here in this dope ass Mr. T costume. That should look amazing. How'd you get his head like that? Your butt is sticking out. <laughs> what? We get some funny pimp characters now, of course. Funny pimp characters were all the rage or something back in the day. Mike Epps plays a pimp named Baby Powder. Him and his assistant pimp, fake Kevin Hart, are looking for the two sex workers from earlier. I will say, as far as pimp jokes go, these niggas are top tier. They're the best characters in the well, movie. You are a, a assistant pimp. You ain't even a real pimp. I'm talking about pimping, been since pimping, since pimping, pimping, since pimping, pimping. Pimp, pimp, pimp. It's in my baby. blood, and you will never be that. Then oh, well, let's practice it. Where's my bitches? Where's my bitches? It goes in together. Where my bitches? Where my bitches? The snitch dude shows up at the party. He sneaks into Mega Man's room to try to find some info on him. He ends up finding the ivory weed, and it smells so good that he smokes it all. <laughs> The party ends with Red Man and Mega Man fighting the pimps and the police shutting everything down. The next day they realize the ivory plant is gone. They real sad about that. Now the only thing they can do is work real hard and study real hard and they gonna fail. They come up with a plan to smoke another dead body. They pick John Quincy Adams for some reason. 
because he was the president at one point? That don't mean he's smart, bro. What the fuck? This nigga died in like 18 something. He don't know shit. Guarantee I'm smarter than this nigga. Also, he would definitely be a complete skeleton by now. How does he have hair and skin left? It's been like 200 years. Didn't you put the ashes in the soil before you brew the plant? We ain't got no time for that shit, all right? Oh, They smoke up that John Quincy Adams pack, but it don't do nothing. Snitch dude comes back after smoking all the ivory plants and they don't beat the shit out of him for some reason. Ivory tries to talk to both of the mans, but they can't hear his dumb ass. Repeat after me. Repeat after me. Yo dog. Yo Zog. Dog. Zog. Idiot. You idiot. They're super close to getting kicked out of school and now the only thing that can save him is Method Man's Truth Serum. Method Man created a truth serum all of a sudden. Apparently it's like a side project he's been working on. How are you smart enough to create a truth serum, but you can't pass any of these damn classes? Those rejects have been rejected. Yo DK, look who's back. can not have my future ex-wife show up to some big wig event without her daddy on her arms. All right, Ivy, this is the last of you. Do your stuff. <laughs> oh yeah! They crash some fancy alumni party and he puts the truth serum in his weed and lights it up in the fireplace. Now everybody getting high. Stoner movie climax. Doesn't even matter what's happening right now. The movie over, basically. But Harvard has been honored to host some of Benjamin Franklin's artifacts, which I personally found. Ladies and gentlemen, Harvard is now the proud owner of America's first bomb. Yo, Ben, tell us, fool, is that a bong or what? Yep, it's the Liberty Bong. I have had it with your uptight, self-serving, over-opinionated ass. Get him! Hit the bricks, dog. Look like you did it, dog, man. You got a new sir, man. Amazing what two brothers from the PJ could do with just a little bit of opportunity. Word. Yeah, with just a little opportunity and some magical weed that helped you cheat on all your tests all day and night. So yeah, they can stay at Harvard as long as they want. It's a happy ending. A.B. Powder gets to teach his own class at Harvard about pimping. This movie should've got an Oscar, bro. This is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. It's not stupid as shit at all. No, in all honesty, this movie is decently funny. It hasn't aged very well, but it's still definitely got some funny moments at the end of the day. It's got some iconic lines. I use that get em sound effect all the time still. Got Blunt is another one. Hit the bricks, dog. There's a lot of quotable shit in here. This is one of those comedy whiplash movies I'll be talking about though, where one scene will be funny as shit, and then the next scene will be unbearably not funny. It's got hella racial stereotypes, of course. It's 2001 comedy movie. That's all they had. None of the gross out humor lands for me either. Well, the smoking the dead bodies thing was kind of funny. Overall, as far as stoner comedies go, this one's pretty high up there. No pun intended. Fun fact, this movie was directed by a dude named Jesse Dillon as Bob Dylan's son in real life. So that's interesting. It was his first feature film or whatever. You know he'd probably be getting dumb ass high if he made some shit like this. Shout out to him, I guess. It's a happy, silly time. They had a lot of fun making this shit, I'm sure. You can definitely feel all the happy, silly vibes. It's just a happy, silly movie. That's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video, dummy. Y'all ass don't be liking the video sometimes. I be seeing that shit. Why you playing with me? Also, be sure to follow me on Twitch. I'll be on there watching movies and shit all day. I'm sure that's not allowed. Go follow me. I love you, no pause. See you next time. All right, it's- My Bumba Cloud Johnson no working, see?